I love Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. I mean, I love any strategy management tycoon game, but I have a really special place in my heart specifically for Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. It was originally released on the PC in October 2004. I was 12 years old and me and my friend used to visit the Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 website every single opportunity that we had. It's probably the most hyped I've ever been for a game pre-release. Maybe I was a little more excited for Spore, but Spore made me never be excited for any video game pre-release ever again. But Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 somehow lived up to every single childlike expectation I had. In my mind, it improved on everything that the excellent and indeed timeless Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 achieved and did so in the third dimension, a series first. So when I heard that it was coming to the Nintendo Switch, I was very very, very excited, but also a little cautious. My experience playing management games on the Switch has been hit or miss. City Skylines is an okay port, but it really does suffer from some really quite horrendous performance issues. But I've been playing RCT3 Complete Edition on the Switch for about four days now, and I'm happy to report that it's really good. It's better than I expected, although there are some limitations. It's a really competent port of an excellent game. If you've never had the joy of playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, RCT3 is a classic tycoon game. You're in charge of building and managing a theme park. You can build rides, design your own roller coasters, place down shops and other amenities. You can customise the landscape, creating mountains and lakes. You can plant gardens and trees. You can use props and other scenery objects to create the park of your dreams. You can then manage the minutiae. Menu you can then manage the minutiae of everyday operation. You can tweak everything from how much a pack of chips costs to how much training you give to your staff. So far, so theme park world, right? But RCT3 managed to find a perfect balance between kid-friendly theme park builder and complex details oriented management sim. You can go into this game from either angle and have a fantastic time playing. If you want to jump in and just plonk down some rides, create a fun theme park and go, yep, that was fun, you can do that. If you want to tweak the price of everything to make an incredibly efficient, profitable theme park, you can do that as well. This was British developer Frontier Development's first attempt at doing a game like this, and they absolutely pulled it off. There's just so much detail in this game that it makes perfect sense why 12 year old me poured hundreds and hundreds of hours into this game when it was first released in 2004. This Switch version doesn't just contain everything from the base game, it also includes both of its expansions, the water park focused Soaked and the zoo focused Wild. That means it includes all rides, objects, improvements and additional campaign scenarios from those two additional packs. This really is the complete version of this classic game. You can build huge water parks and and zoos. Effectively, this is also a zoo tycoon on top of everything else. It's the entire package that you might be used to playing on the PC. And it feels bizarre to be playing it on a handheld system. As is so often the case when something I absolutely love is ported over to the Nintendo Switch, just walking around the house or playing it in bed feels so strange. And in general, like I said at the start of this video, it's a great port, a really competent port. In terms of content and gameplay, there really is no limitations when it comes to this version of the game. It's still a brilliant game. I spent most of the 8 to 10 hours I've played of the game with its scenario mode, building parks in order to complete specific and increasingly challenging objectives. The scenario mode is great fun, each scenario is completely different from the last and having access to the additional scenarios from Soaked and Wild is fantastic. There's just so much content for you to work your way through. You could happily pick up this game and just try and work your way through its scenario mode, getting the tycoon rank on each one and you would have 
a wonderful time doing so. I know that I have so far and I absolutely will continue to do so. I think one thing I was a little bit concerned about were the controls and I'm happy to say that the controls are really, really good. The majority of construction and management is mapped to a radial wheel accessed by squeezing the left bumper and selecting a menu item using A. You can navigate through submenus using the D-pad. Y places objects and item specific options such as opening up a ride or changing the colours of the queue are then accessed by a second radial wheel that you can select by squeezing the right bumper. Swapping between both is initially a little fiddly as these control schemes on consoles so often are but after about 20 minutes I found it to be the most elegant and dare I say intuitive implementation I've seen on a console maybe ever. It feels far better than City Skylines or The Sims 4 on PlayStation 4, that's for sure. In fact, it's so good that it actually made me excited for Planet Coaster's upcoming console port, especially if this was a practice run for Frontier in that regard. If Planet Coaster on PlayStation 5 has this exact same control layout, it's going to be something very special. So playing the game felt great. I was able to build up a park very quickly, plonking down rides and even designing coasters was really easy to do and I was shocked by that. I just assumed something very fundamental would be lost without a mouse and keyboard but no not at all. I was able to very quickly check how happy all of my little peeps were. I was able to check my budgets and then I was able to zoom around the map to place down another ride or a shop or a toilet or a bin and doing so felt great. Admittedly it favours a slower pace of play compared to to the PC version. I found myself pausing things a lot more while I dug into the menus and chose what I wanted to build, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's not like you're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 in a rush. This is a relaxing game and slowing things down a little bit doesn't hinder it in that sense. Okay, let's talk about overall performance because this was my biggest concern and I'm sure it is for a lot of people watching this video too. In general, I'm happy to say the performance performance of this is very, very smooth. There's a little bit of, I don't really know how to describe this, slow down drift to movement in denser areas on smaller parks. If you have a large buildup of rides on a scenario map, for instance, and you navigate over to it, the camera might just overshoot it a little bit. There's just a slight bit of drift, but in general, it runs great when playing on smaller scenario parks. Even on full speed, things work completely fine. In order to try and increase performance, you can tell that Frontier have scaled back the visuals quite a lot, slightly zooming out causes the quality of the peeps to very, very quickly drop and then they disappear completely as you zoom out further. When viewing a park from the highest point you might notice that a lot of the tracks from roller coasters in the distance completely disappear, things like that. But I mean this is a simulation game running on a console. It doesn't really matter that it's 16 years old. These games are always processor intensive and consoles always really struggle with them. So in general these little visual changes they don't hinder gameplay. Yeah the game looks old. It doesn't look fantastic it's not the best looking game on Switch by a country mile, but those little changes, they make sense why they're there, they don't get in the way, they clearly help with performance so that's fine. The real issues appear with larger parks. So when I first got my hands on this game I played a scenario map for about an hour and I didn't trust that the performance could be this good. So I decided to test it out, I went straight into the sandbox mode which gives you access to unlimited money and a huge amount of land to build on and viewer let me tell you, I built a monstrosity. I spent about two hours packing a sandbox map with as many coasters and rides and swimming pools as I could possibly fit in it. I quickly hit what appeared to be the max guest cap of 1,500, understandably lower than on the PC version, but clearly they've put in certain caps to try and keep performance steady. There didn't appear to be any kind of ride or object cap. I was just spamming trees, fountains and animatronics just to try and hit it, but there didn't seem to be one. On default speed, this monstrosity of a park 
Rock was okay performance wise. There was definitely a lower frame rate and controls became a little too floaty, but the game was still functional and playable. I had to pause while building swimming pools because the frame rate did tank even on default speed, but it was still playable. However, when I bumped up that speed to top speed, the frame rate dropped into single digits. I mean, it was still playable, but I don't know why you'd want to. It made me feel pretty headachy and sick. It's not good, and I'm a little concerned about how the game will perform in a park with thousands of objects. I worry that could limit creativity if the frame rate tanks when creating complex builds, but I did play some scenario maps that had really complex builds, and the performance was fine completely smooth as butter, to be honest. So maybe this was just me taking the piss. I think in general, performance on this game is really good, but I did my due diligence. I tested it out. If you're looking to build a huge monstrous theme park, you're going to hit some performance issues. I think that the game works so wonderfully on the Switch. It offers such an incredible management experience that it doesn't matter. I had to find poor performance in this game. That is a rarity for a game of this kind on the Switch. I think mileage may vary depending on person to person, but I personally loved what I played. I thought it was very smooth. I thought it was very playable. In general, I think this is a wonderful port and considering what the game is, considering how much is in there, performance is very good. I've had such an incredible time playing it so far, and I can't wait to play more. If you loved Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 back in the day and you're excited to play it on the go, I absolutely recommend this. If you're looking for a complex theme park management sim on the Switch in general, I absolutely recommend this. It's definitely better than Atari's own efforts with Roller Coaster Tycoon Adventure. Adventures? What's that even called? I think there is a distinct lack of these kind of games on the Switch and Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition is probably the best on the console at this point. It's a wonderful game and I really do think you'll like it if you're looking for something to scratch that particular tycoon itch. Very interested to read other people's reviews about this because frame rates and performance doesn't really bother me, so curious to see what other people think. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this review. Please do leave me a comment if you've been playing the game. I'd love to see what you think about it. You can like this video if you'd like to do that and make sure to subscribe for for more indie and handheld stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time. New videos every Sunday at 4pm, unless they're on a Thursday like this one, because the game had an embargo. <laughs> Alright, bye!